Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our current affair MCQ series in which what we do we daily discuss MCQs from your current affairs perspective. So today is 19 September so let's see what are the current, current affairs of today. So the first is consider the following statements related to Manrega scheme. First the scheme guarantees at least 100 days of employment to all agricultural laborers only. Second Manrega wages are linked to the CPI agricultural labor. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that uh, uh, this uh, uh, only second statement is uh, correct because first is not correct. It is uh, um, available to uh, all those individuals who are willing to do uh, this uh, 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 work so uh, minimum at least 100 days of employment is available so uh, it is available to rural unskilled labor so it, uh, it, it the purpose is to increase in economic security so it is a right based approach in which 100 days of granted wage employment will be provided to rural unskilled labor if they are willing to uh, take it take it and also uh, it ensures that there is decrease in migration from uh, uh, of labor from rural to urban area so it differentiates itself from earlier welfare schemes by taking a grassroots driven approach to employment generation. So uh, the program under the act are uh, demand driven and provide legal provisions for uh, appeal in case work is not provided or payment, uh, payments are, uh, are delayed. So earlier welfare programs they were like a paternalistic in approach. So everything was centralized. So here what is the what is the approach? Uh, uh, the, uh, the work is provided on the basis of demand. So if uh, the work is not available then uh, the legal remedy is available for it. So the scheme is funded by the central government so which bears the full cost of unskilled uh, labor and 75% uh, of cost of material um, for works undertaken under this law. So central and state government uh, audits the works undertaken under this set through annual report prepared by Central Employment Guarantee Council and State Employment Guarantee Council. So these reports have to be pre uh, presented by the incumbent go government in the legislature. So few salient features are basically it, it gives a significant amount of control to the Gram Panchayats for managing public works, strengthening Panchayati Raj institutions, Gram Sabhas uh, and also Gram Sabhas are free to accept or reject recommendations from immediate and district Panchayats. So here uh, the intermediate and district Panchayats. So uh, what does it mean? So basically uh, uh, the work can be uh, taken depending upon the uh, demand, uh, demand at the local level. So it is not that uh, 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 the um, the, that uh, uh, only uh, only in that uh, a particular sector the job will be available. So if in case Gram Panchayat feels that in this uh, 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 sector the work is needed and then uh, this uh, uh, the work is then uh, started and employment is provided to the uh, uh, employment seekers under this act. So it incorporates accountability in its operational guidelines and ensure compliance and transparency at all levels. Next is consider the following statements related to National Recruitment Agency. First NRA will conduct preliminary examination for all the recruitment to government and public sector banks at present conducted by UPSC, SSC and IBPS. Second, it conducts yearly once the examination for the respective vacancies. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me let tell you friends that uh, uh, both of these statements are incorrect. So the solution is D. So finance ministry has uh, approved the proposal for the creation of national recruitment agency whose objective is to streamline the recruitment of some posts in the government along with various equivalent uh, sorry friends along with various uh, equivalent recruitment in public sector banks. So this national recruitment agency what it will be doing it will be uh, set up to conduct common eligibility test that is CET for all various competitive examinations in which an estimated 2.5 candidates appear annually. So it will conduct uh, preliminary, preliminary examinations for all these recruitment which are at present conducted by SSC and Institute of Banking Personal Selection. So it is not uh, the UPS is not under its ambit because it will have separate prelims only. Uh, so it will then subsequently forward the list of qualifying candidates to the respective recruitment recruiting agencies to conduct the mains examinations. So the basic idea is to basically shortlist qualifying candidates through a common eligibility test before sending them for the mains examination. So need uh, need for such a new agency is to basically streamline recruitment process on subordinate rank post in the government and to reduce the burden of SSC and IBPS among others from holding preliminary recruitment exams which is an extensive exercise. 
So let's move on to the next question. Next is consider, uh, which uh, which ministry in, uh, implements the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010? A uh, Home Ministry, B Finance Ministry, C Commerce Ministry, D None of the above. So friends, it is an uh, easy question. The answer is A Home Ministry. So this uh, act is uh, in news uh, for quite a long time. So uh, there have been multiple revisions uh, uh, from quite few. Uh, uh, from uh, if we if we check uh, uh, the newspapers of few uh, a few uh, uh, up to three years. So multiple. Uh, 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 new uh, rules have been uh, notified under it so uh, now new rules have been notified under which every member of an NGO please note this every member and not just the director so every member must now under the auth through an affidavit certify that uh, the, uh, uh, that member has never been involved in diverting foreign funds or propagating sedition or advocating violent means so earlier the only the applicant or director level person was required to give such and uh, such a declaration or affidavit but now each and every member of that NGO is required to give that that happy debt that uh, is not using foreign funds for any uh, international activity or for example advocating violent means or uh, propagating sedition so earlier as per the market value of the gift item in india rupees 25000 and uh, now it has been raised to rupees 1 lakh so uh, earlier uh, the gift uh, item that was uh, uh, received reverse rupees 25000 uh, up to rupees 25000 uh, that was not to be uh, kind of informed to the uh, this uh, ministry but now it is it has become mandatory that uh, but now this limit has been raised to rupees 1 lakh so if a person uh, engaged in an ngo uh, receives uh, a gift worth uh, rupees 1 lakh or up to rupees 1 lakh then he need not uh, inform that uh, the home ministry or respective agency so it is mandatory for the office bearers and key functionaries and members of the ngos to certify that they have not been prosecuted or convicted for conversion so no such activity must be taken up taken up by the ngo and also uh, if uh, that activity is taken up then uh, there must be clear uh, uh, kind of uh, record that uh, uh, they, this uh, uh, this their, their conversion drive is not uh, a kind of they were they are not convicted in this drive so that must be a kind of voluntary conversion on the part of the individual uh, uh, to which these NGOs want to convert to a particular religion so the, uh, that is thing uh, and basically it ensures that uh, uh, criminal tension and disharmony doesn't uh, uh, take place so regulation of foreign funding uh, is there so basically this act and rules frames under uh, under it so basically there are various ngos that receive funds from foreign uh, foreign nationals or foreign uh, foreign governments or uh, private sector so by it basically aims to regulate the receipt and usage of foreign contribution by non governmental organizations in india since the act is internal security legislation despite being a law related to financial legislation so this falls under the home ministry and not the reserve bank of india so Hope and objective is to prevent use of foreign contribution or foreign uh, hospitality for any activity detrimental to the national interest. So, for example, uh, no activity should be taken that must be anti-national. So, this word though anti-national has uh, has uh, now become a quite uh, contentious issue and also one one uh, uh, hesitates to say this uh, because anti-national has been a, has become a kind of tool to prosecute those who ask the questions to the government so that is not a, a concern here just uh, focus on your studies uh, don't get into controversial thing and also then it has a very wide scope and is applicable to a natural person body corporate all other types of indian entities whether incorporated or not as well as nris and overseas branches subsidiaries of indian companies and other entities formed or registered in india so it is implemented by ministry of home affairs government of india so please ensure that you uh, know the scope of it so it is applicable to a natural person single person a body corporate Corporate also, so all other types of Indian entities that have, which are incorporated or not, and also NRIs and overseas branches, subsidiaries of Indian companies and other entities formed or registered in India. So that is very important thing. So it uh, prohibits uh, to, to, in order to achieve the above objective, the Act prohibits acceptance and use of foreign contribution or foreign hospitality by certain specified con uh, category of persons, such as a candidate for election, judge, journalist, columnist, newspaper publication, cartoonist, and others. So it regulates the inflow to and usage of foreign contribution by NGOs by prescribing a mechanism to accept use and report usage of the same so definition is uh, quite uh, comprehensive so you can uh, ch uh, check this entire thing in uh, uh, your uh, 
by pausing the video because uh, it is quite a lengthy topic uh, so that uh, that is consuming time so now let's move on to the next question next is consider the following statements related to bharat bill payment system first bharat bill payment system is driven by national payment corporation of india uh, second payments through bharat uh, uh, bill payment uh, uh, system should be made only through electronic mode so which of the above statements is correct let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is first so bharat bill payment is basically a system Uh, uh, that is driven by National Payment Corporation of India. So let's see what are the details. So answer is A. So RBI has expanded its scope and coverage of Bharat Bill Payment System to include all categories of billers who raise uh, recurring bills and payments, uh, except prepaid recharges, as eligible par participants on a voluntary basis. So at present, the facility of payment of recurring bills through BBPS is uh, available only in five segments: direct to home, electricity, gas, water, and telecom. So this Bharat Bill Payment System. Uh, has now been expanded of uh, and expanded and expansion of biller categories would increase the user base base of bharat bill pay along with providing an efficient cost effective alternative to existing systems and enhance consumer confidence and experience so it is basically is it is an rbi conceptualized system driven by national payment corporation of india so it is a one stop payment for, for platform for all bills providing an interoperable and accessible anytime anywhere bill payment service to consumer customers across the country with certainty reliability and safety of transactions so there are many uh, other uh, payment systems that are there uh, that provide you this facility, uh, facility of online payment but this bharat uh, bill payment system is of uh, uh, this rbi and it is driven by national payment corporation of india so it, uh, it is official uh, platform of the government of india so payments through bbps may be made through using cash transfer checks and electronic modes so bill aggregators and banks who will function as operating units will carry out these transactions for the Uh, customers so more about national payment corporation of india is it is set up with the guidance and support of reserve bank of india and indian uh, indian banks association it uh, it is an umbrella organization for all retail payment systems in india so it has 10 promoter banks let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements related to ghadial species first national chambal sanctuary is largest home to ghadial species second it is declared as vulnerable in iuc and red list so which of the above statements is correct so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends that only first statement is correct that is national chambal sanctuary is the largest home to ghadial species so chambal uh, uh, this solution is uh, a so it is not vulnerable but it is critically uh, endangered so please note it it is it is very important ghadial species is critically endangered so male ghadial has a distinctive bow at the end of the snout which resembles an northern bear pod known in hindus hence the name so ghadial is called uh, 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 by this name so habitat is foremost following rivers with the uh, high sand banks that they use for basking and building nests so they inhabited all major river systems uh, at one point of time uh, from uh, uh, spanning from uh, this uh, 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 indus river in the west to the iravati river in east uh, but now their distribution is now limited to only 2% of their former range so in india uh, there are uh, they are found in girwar river chambal river kane river son river mahanadi river ramganga river so nepal uh, rapti narayani river and uh, then threats are uh, hunting for skins trophies and indigenous medicines and their eggs collected for consumption so, so there is a decrease in riverine habitat as dams barrages irrigation canals and artificial embankments for belt siltation and sand mining changed uh, uh, river courses or so riparian agriculture and grazing by livestock disrupts ghadial behavior and may even force local populations to desert the area so there is also depletion of fresh fish resources on which they are dependent and also then there is issue of entanglement in fishing nets so please note that uh, this is very important very very important please note it it is very important species so ghadial you must know that it is critically endangered and it is uh, uh, its uh, its largest habitat is national chambal sanctuary so more details are uh, here conservation is that it is listed under schedule 1 of the species under the indian wildlife act 1972 so project crocodile is there in 1975 it began so it is basically a joint program between government of india united nation development fund and food and agricultural organization so it is it, uh, it aims to uh, uh, protect these uh, this species by in intensive captive breeding and rearing program so protected areas are basically national chambal sanctuary and katerianat uh, katerianat uh, nagharth wildlife sanctuary so friends i don't know how to pronounce it please bear with
me valve any wrong pronunciation next let's move to the sixth question sixth question is consider the following statements related to the military exercise INRS RTN trilateral exercise first it is the first maiden exercise uh, involving Indian Navy Republic of Singapore Navy and Royal Thailand Navy uh, second the exercise uh, took place in the South China Sea so which of the above statements is correct let me tell you friends that only first statement is correct so it is first maiden exercise that involves the navies of navies of India of uh, Singapore and then uh, this Royal Navy of uh, Thailand so uh, answer is uh, a that is one only so this is a maiden trilateral exercise and it has commenced at the Port Blair on 16 September 19 so it, is, it has not been conducted in uh, uh, the South China Sea so five day long exercise is aimed at bolstering uh, maritime interrelationships amongst Singapore, Thailand and India let's move on to the next question next is International Haranth Dink Award seen in news uh, belongs to which country A. Russia B. Turkey uh, C. Georgia D. None of the above so answer is friends B that is uh, uh, Turkey so this uh, International Haram Dink Award is basically uh, it has been won by a Meghalaya based rights activist that is Agents Karshing. Kar Kar so he received 11th International Haram Dink Award along with Turkish activist against male violence uh, Nebhat Akok. So it is about basically it commemorates the memory of uh, Turkish American journalist Haram Dink who was killed in 2007. So since uh, 2009 this award is presented annually by the Haram Dink Foundation on Haram Dink's birthday. So the award is presented to individuals, organizations or groups that work for a world free from discrimination, racism and violence and who take personal risks, risks for achieving those ideals. Next is Astra Singing News is related to A. Indigenous Missile uh, B. Satellite Telescope C. Weather Monitor Balloon D. None of the above. So friends the answer is A. That is Indigenous Missile. So Astra is basically Indigenous Missile uh, and it is beyond visual range air to air missile. So it is an all weather state of the art missile developed by DRDO so Astra uh, and it, it can engage and uh, destroy enemy aircraft at supersonic speed uh, that is at a speed of 1.2 Mach to 1.4 Mach in head on up to 80 km and tail chase modes up to 20 km so please note this this is very important so beyond visual range uh, missile is, uh, is Astra missile and it is air to air so Astra is basically to protect uh, 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 to protect uh, basically and uh, as it engages uh, uh, fighter aircrafts and then uh, enemy aircraft and so obviously then it is uh, called Astra missile and it can engage uh, this enemy aircraft at supersonic speed. So 3.8 meter tall Astra is a radar homing missile and the smallest of the DRDO developed missiles and can be launched from different altitudes and it can reach up to 110 km when fired from an altitude of 15 km, 44 km and when launched from an altitude of 8 km and 21 km when fired from sea level. So next is Akadmik Lomnosov seen in news is related to. A. Russia's floating nuclear power plants B. Russia's humanoid ro robot C. Russia's supersonic missile D. None of the above So friends, uh, let me tell you that this is uh, answer is A that is Russia's floating nuclear power plant So answer is A uh, So this academic Lomonosov is basically world's only floating nuclear power unit So it was launched by Russia on May 19, 2018 at uh, St. Petersburg shipyard so basically this floating nuclear power plant completed its 5000 km long journey from northern sea route. So this has sparked fears among environmentalists over the safety of the arctic region. So this is basically your uh, uh, ninth question and let's move on to the last question of the day. The last question is pick the old one out. A. Nishant, B. Laksha, um, uh, C. Rastam, D. Tejas. So friends let me tell you that answer is D. So Tejas is basically a fighter jet and uh, rest are basically India's unmanned aerial vehicles. So please note it. Uh, so in news was Rustam 2 and uh, it is a drone uh, uh, is a medium altitude long and endurance unmanned aerial vehicle developed by DRDO and objective of the drone is to carry out surveillance for the armed forces with an endurance of 24 hours then the drone was developed for use by all three services of the Indian armed forces primarily for intelligence, uh, surveillance and reconnaissance operations and uh, this medium altitude prototype can fly at over 22,000 feet and is a long endurance unmanned aerial vehicle that has an appropriate flight time of 20 hours and it can fly at around 280 km per hour and carry a variety of payloads like medium range electro optic, long range electro optic and synthetic aperture radar, electronic intelligence. 
सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फ्रेंड्स दिस योर टुडे डिस्कशन तो प्लीज नोट दैट दैट तेजस इज बेसिकली फाइटर एयरक्राफ्ट एंड ऑल्सो तेजस वॉज रिसेंटली इन न्यूज because uh, um, the the present uh, defense minister uh, uh, that is rajnath singh is the uh, first defense minister who who uh, who flew in the this aircraft the fighter aircraft that is tejas and uh, uh, rest all are unmanned aerial vehicles so friends this is all about today's discussion if you like the questions if you like the video then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and lastly friends if you want to uh, remain in touch with various updates that we do on our channel then you can join our public telegram channel that is shown on your screen the link of which is will is will also be provided in the description box so you can check the description box and can join our initiative uh, and can join our public telegram channel and friends we also have a website that is www.achieveias.co.in so you can visit this website for various updates that we do on our uh, uh, on our channel and also uh, that we do on our uh, website so that you can get an idea about the various initiatives that we have for the purpose of your preparation and lastly friends if you have any doubts if you have any queries you can uh, you are free to ask in the comment box and if in case you are uh, uh, you don't want to ask them publicly so you can then mail on these uh, this mail and this contact number that is shown on your screen that is contact number is 8968920720 and mail is achieveias21 at the rate gmail.com so you can contact us uh, at this these details and also friends if in case you are interested to get the pdfs of these discussions then do ensure that you contact us on these details and also let me tell you friends that the link for the subscription is also there in the description box so if in case you want to subscribe to the initiative to, to the pdfs of this initiative you can check the description box so obviously there is a minimum uh, fee for this uh, subscription that is rupees 99 per month so it has been solely kept for the purpose of our motivation so that we people can remain motivated to help you people so if in case you are interested to join our link then uh, join our initiative then do ensure that you check the description box so this is all about friends today's video do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you have a very nice day ahead